thought I could change my name. Start a new life. But I could never escape his shadow. My son, you can't run from your past. Is this what you wanted? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frankie and this is Let's Get Real, where today I'm talking about the 25th film in the MCU, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Martial arts master Shang-Chi's past comes back to haunt him after thinking he abandoned it for years, forcing him back into the actions of the Ten Rings organization. When it comes to my thoughts on the character of Shang-Chi, I had never heard of this character until the film's announcement, and I wasn't sure what to think of an entire movie about such an obscure character, and one that seemed out of place in the MCU. But as more trailers, interviews, and behind the scenes came out for this movie, I began to get more excited for it as it seemed like everyone working on this movie was extremely passionate about this film. From Kevin Feige who wanted to make this movie for almost 20 years, to the cast and crew, and especially the main star Simu Liu. And this might have been one of the best introductions to a character in the entire MCU. I'm not even slightly exaggerating. This is the most creative film I've seen Marvel make since Black Panther where the entire movie has some really interesting and clever world building that allowed the film to stand on its own and feel like an original project where there were actually times when I forgot I was watching a Marvel film and a superhero movie at that. And as a huge fan of Marvel and the MCU, it's just so refreshing to see the franchise introduce a new character and pull off some extremely unique concepts and tonal ideas and go all out on them in a way you wouldn't expect this franchise to go. This film also cleverly combines the superhero genre with the kung fu genre, which is probably thanks to how the character of Shang-Chi was inspired by Bruce Lee in 1970s kung fu movies. The movie also isn't afraid to take on a darker tone at points of the film, mostly with the flashback scenes, and it fits the movie really well, although it doesn't stop the movie from implementing that classic Marvel humor, and somehow found a way where it never interfered with the tone this movie was going for. The score is also consistently amazing throughout the movie, and really stands out when compared to other Marvel scores. This movie is a visual spectacle in literally every possible way. While the CGI is noticeable sometimes, it looks phenomenal for the most part. The choreography on the fight scenes is easily the show stealer of the entire film. It's so visually appealing and this, the CGI, and the creativity of the film allows this movie to have some of the most well-crafted, intense, creative, and stunning action sequences I've seen in a film in years. The cinematography is also beautiful, the film itself is extremely well-directed, this and Daniel Creighton allow the film to be very distinct and different when compared to other comic book films. The acting in this film was amazing and so well done. Simu Liu is perfect as Shang-Chi. His character is fun, powerful, and that performance is thanks to how passionate the actor was for this movie and Marvel as a whole. Tony Lung was phenomenal as the real Mandarin, and I'm not kidding when I say I consider him to be one of the best villains in the entire MCU. His character was complexly written where his plans are clearly wrong, but his motive for what he's doing is easy to believe, as he is a man who is unwilling to let go of the past and move on. But he also has a sympathetic side to him, and that's thanks to his relation with Shang-Chi, and shows so much emotion throughout the film. Seriously, compare that to Maliki, Yellow Jacket, Ronin, Dracoff, and especially our original Mandarin Killian, who are just one-dimensional evil people who didn't show any emotion or interesting motivations. I am the Mandarin! As for the other actors, Fala Chan sold me every second as Lee. Michelle Yao is really good as Ying Nan. There are a few more actors that I want to mention, but their character appearances are spoilers. But for the time they're in the movie, they're just awesome. Of the cast, Aquafina is easily the weakest performance as she seems to be in every film she's in. But she's not awful in this. She does have a few funny moments here and there. And there's one running gag with her character that I personally found really fun and it had a great payoff during the post credit scene. Shang-Chi is basically the embodiment of how Marvel can really bring out an unexpected hit when they're bold and creative. Somehow Marvel took a character that I never heard of and made a movie where now I want to see so much more of him. If you're a Marvel fan, please go see this movie as soon as you can on the biggest screen possible. It's definitely worth seeing it in theaters. And this really is one of the best introductions to a character the MCU has created and it will definitely leave you wanting more. I'd even recommend it to non-Marvel fans, as it works as a standalone movie, and you can easily enjoy it, even if you don't get some of the Easter eggs and cameos in the film. I'm giving Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings a 9 out of 10. 
So what are your thoughts on Shang-Chi? Did you love it? Do you want to see more of him? Or are you excited to see this movie? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for more videos. We make a good team!